Let's see how the trends played out this week. And we're joined by independent journalist Ayanda Sishi Wigzel. Good evening to you and lovely to have you. So much to talk about this week. Let's kick things off with Action SA and EFF 9As. Let's first have a listen to this. Bongani Baloy, that I was very sad about. Bongani Baloy had a lovely chat to me three weeks before he announced he was leaving. He chatted about his future in the DA. He looked at his career prospects. My guess, my guess is, my guess is that they see that they potentially have better career prospects in other parties. I think Bongani Baloy has his eye very firmly on succeeding Herman Mashaba. There's a lot of tension now between Herman Mashaba and Bongani Baloy. And I think Bongani saw a shortcut to becoming a leader of a political party. Well, can I just say, where's the tea? Let's just sip some tea then. <laughs> that is exactly what I was doing when I was listening to Helen Zilla's interview. Good evening to you, Iman. Good Hi. evening to all of the SABC viewers. So social media users were a little pulled back from the back and forth that was happening between the Democratic Alliance and Action SA. As we know, the Democratic Alliance has pulled out of the coalition in Ekuruleni and have, they've chosen to sit in the opposition seats. Helen Zilla has now said that, you know, she is a little bit saddened about what happened um, with Bongani Boloi's um, leaving of, of the Democratic Alliance and going into, in, into Action SA. Social media users are really just tired of the back and forth and they want to actually see what work is going to be coming out of these two organizations. Because Action SA says that the reason why it is that they are pulling out of the coalition is because of the fact that they, they believe that the Democratic Alliance favors suburbs over townships in Ikoroleni. And the Democratic Alliance has come out and saying that, no, that is absolutely not true. So this back and forth that is happening is really getting on people's nerves because they want to know when is the service delivery going to happen? When is the work going to happen? What was interesting, though, about Helen Zilla's interview was that she had made mention of the fact that other political organizations have had black people, you know, also leave. But the difference with the Democratic Alliance and many social media users pointed out um, to this was that prior to Musi Maimani leaving, there were many comments that Helen Zilla had said that contributed to the actual electoral results that came out in 2019, which then started the catalyst of the commission happening, which then led to Musi Maimani and a lot of other black um, black members of the Democratic Alliance leaving. So there is this back and forth that is happening, mainly in Ikoruleni as well, because this is the playground for the coalitions to happen. And the Democratic Alliance, I think, is really trying to save face, because they know that without the numbers from Action SA, they really cannot hold on to that mayoralship. And this is what we are seeing right now, is just a grab for power, and people are really, really tired of it. I know that on Facebook, the, the, um, the audiences are more new Wants, so they're more, um, they're more um, better suited to each um, to each of the supporters. But on Twitter, we get a more broad, a more broad look as to what people who are, are thinking outside of the political organisations, and all they want to see is the different political parties actually working together to bring service delivery. Well, this next election period is going to be interesting, uh, as my mum would probably say, no honey pop a dance. Um, Oh, Afrikaans. Did I just speak Afrikaans? You did. You're one of the 45. 45. <laughs> was it 44 or 45? It was 44. Now you're 45. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, come, we'll circle back to that one. But on a serious note, though, mm. the Pitbull hashtag, and, and that was very distressing um, to follow, to watch. And, and it did raise a valid debate in the country. Yes, it did. So as we know, there was another child this time in Bloemfontein who was mauled by a Pitbull. And this has reignited the calls for the power breed to be efficient banned here in South Africa. The Pitbull Association of South Africa has come out and said that, you know, it's the owners who are responsible for this, but also they want to condemn the killings that are happening. And, and they do feel that if you have a vicious animal, that you should give it up to the SPCA. And this is why the SPCA was actually trending for two days in Bloemfontein, because they reported that they had received some Pitbulls uh, that were surrendered to the SPCA because the owners felt as if, you know, they could no longer take care of them or they felt that as if their space was not conducive enough for the pit bulls to be kept safely and for other people
people to be safe as well. This has ignited a lot of debate, but on social media, it's pretty unanimous across Twitter and across Facebook as well, saying that they, there needs to be some sort of control that is happening. There is an Animals, there is an Animals um, Matters uh, Act that, um, that has been in existence since 1990, which actually has bylaws as to what kinds of environments you should have if mm. you're going to have a power breed. But the problem is that this act is not enforced and the mm. SPCA is really spread thin right now. And we are seeing that they are needed now more than ever. But people now have gotten to the point where they are saying that we need to ban these animals and we cannot blame them. On social media, we were seeing lots of, of users actually talking about the experiences that they've had um, with pit bull attacks and how some, some of their family members have lost lives, other people have been maimed and have lost limbs due to pit bull attacks and this has been re-triggering for them. Yeah. So the SPCA is calling for people to be more responsible with their animals but they're also saying that if you feel as if this animal is overwhelming you, please surrender it to the SPCA. There will be no judgment on, on, on their side and they are there to help. Yeah, it's a sad one, both for the animals and, and for the animal owners and everyone involved. Really, it's quite an emotive subject. Let's come to ESCOM and then I've got two more we've got to get to really quickly. Yes, so ESCOM has entered into stage four load shedding until further notice. And this past week, there was stage two and stage three load shedding that was interchangeable. People are frustrated me included. <laughs> Neighbourhoods have been without power for up to 48 hours in North Riding and in, in Linden at, at, at some points and people who work from home have been voicing out their frustrations. Also the lack of communication that comes from city power as well has been a point of contention on social media because some people realise that you know the only way that they can get to, to, so, to, to, to city power is through Twitter because sometimes their websites is, it may it maybe down or maybe the calls have just become so much that they actually close them down. So there needs to be more work in, in terms of communication that is happening because right now all of South Africans are seriously frustrated as well as businesses. But what I also noted on Twitter was that there are some users who are disabled who actually need to have access to electricity yeah. for oxygen purposes and they are the ones who are suffering greatly from this stage four. Sarans Bayakha or Charlize Pratt? I wish I knew what you said right Can now. Can we quickly speak about Charlize? Of course, let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Charlize was trending because she said in an interview that Afrikaans is a dying language and about only 44 people speak it. And it left social media, some found it funny, Others found it really, really offensive. And there was a lot of misinformation that was coming, or that was going around about the language of, of, of Afrikaans. So Afrikaans is a Creole language that was created here in South Africa by the slave population. And most Afrikaans speakers are actually not Caucasian. Most Afrikaans speakers are colored black and Indian. So a lot of people took offense to this, but also um, language, um, language, uh, Afrikaans language, first first language speakers as well said that you know they are proud of their language and, and Charlize does not live in this country. Yeah. We also had Benoni uh, disown her officially <laughs> on social media. Oh, shame, so we'll now see what's going to come of that. It's an interesting one also in the way that it, it sparked the conversation. So schismatic. Final quick one. Senza Mayua, obviously a big story this week. Let's listen to the sound clip and then we'll have a quick chat about it. I'm not going to another question. I'm not asking him to answer and the question. If you don't have another question, sit down. No, 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 no. You are not going to ask. Your Lordship, you cannot tell me to sit down. Your Lordship. If you don't have another question. Who said that I don't have another question? Yeah, then ask another question. Your Lordship. Your Lordship. Don't, don't do that to me. What, I'm, are you I'm, doing? what are you doing to me? I'm what we witnessed there was a really just intense exchange that was happening between the defense and, and, and the judge. But furthermore, there were other instances that were happening this week. We saw the media being kicked out of the, court, um, of, of the courtroom because um, uh, erroneously uh, the witness's face was shown on television. But this case is now starting to to weigh on people's minds because now they're speaking more about the family and what and the weights that the family is going through because people are interested in this case. People have been making sure that journalists 
behave. And we saw that when the media was kicked out, people were really complaining and asking and pleading with journalists to please behave because this is the only way that they can actually witness what is happening there. But also people are really, really concerned about, about the, the state of the family at this point and, and what this is doing to their mental health. But also people are questioning whether or not uh, Dumelo Matlala, who is, who is in the witness stand right now, is a credible witness because um, of, 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 of the fact that he accepted money uh, from, from Netflix and did not share that with, um, with the daughter of, of Senzo Meyua. Oh, it, there's so many twists and turns so and, and certainly a lot of fodder then for mm. social media engagement. Thank you as always, Ayanda, doing a brilliant job just wrapping it all up for us and we'll see you again hopefully next week. Thank you so Thank much. You.